The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Have you ever known terror? Have you ever come up against something that so threatened you, so horrified you, that it stopped your heart for a moment? If you never have, count yourself lucky. But don't count on your luck too much. After all, who's to say that terror may never touch you, huh? Consider Helen and Jim Crane. They never thought it would ever touch them. Jim, there's blood all over. And the axe. Did you see the axe? Come on, let's get out of here. The blizzard. We can't. We stay. can't stay here either. There must have been a terrible fight in that kitchen, and I'm not waiting for the winner to come back. You don't suppose? Oh. What? The murderer. The murderer. The police are looking for. The man who slaughtered the Grant family. He said he was holed up somewhere on the mountain. <gasps> this, this cabin, maybe? You don't think... All I think is that we'd better get out of here. Our mystery drama, Blizzard of Terror, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Loper and stars Lois Smith. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Dare you join me now in a blizzard of terror? Not so fast, not so quick to answer yes. Are your nerves in shape for what lies ahead? Have you promised yourself a good night's sleep? A promise you want to keep? In simple brief, are you who now listen to my voice ready to cope with terror? Very well. You made the choice, not I. Come along, then. Well, come on. China will form no coalition with Russia in the foreseeable future. That's the world news. Now I have a special bulletin from the big Indian sheriff's office. Jim, turn the radio sheriff off. Sheriff Ed Ralston warns all motorists to stay off the roads on Thunder Mountain. Not only because of the blizzard, but also because the man sought for the brutal murder of the Grant family is believed to be hiding out somewhere on Jim, the mountain. Jim, please shut it off. All of them. With a kitchen carving knife, the Grant family... Thank you, Mr. Crane. You're welcome, Mrs. Crane. We don't need to be told again and again that we're in a blizzard on Thunder Mountain. We know we are, thanks to you. I'm sorry. It's okay, Skip it. Maybe it is my fault. Oh, Jim! Oh, oh that was a close one. Oh. You know, I can't see the road. All I can see is snow. What's that? What's what? There, just ahead, back under the trees. A, a cabin? So? We better stop. Oh, no, no way. Jim. We're just managing to make it up this grade now. If we stop, we'll never get started If again. we keep going, we're sure to get stuck. Those snowdrifts out there are getting worse. Yeah, I know, We'd but... be safer in that cabin. We could freeze to death. Jim, please, for once, listen to reason. <sighs> okay, okay, you win. You always do. Don't stop here. Well, you just said... But not here. The cabin's over there. If we drive in there, we will get stuck. You really are going to have to get new glasses. Can't you see the road? Oh, oh, yeah. Tire tracks. Snowed over, but tracks. Those tire tracks, they mean somebody's there. Yes. Look, look. Smoke's coming out of the chimney. Ah, oh, 
Now, are you glad we turned in? A swooning with delight. You're angry because I was right. When are you wrong? When are you ever wrong? Oh, you are something. You you are. You are really something. Why do we quarrel like this, fly at each other every time? Oh, maybe if you weren't so darned independent. Forget it. Forget it. Okay, come on. ashtray. The tray is full of pipe ashes. Yeah. Oh, here's a coffee cup, half full. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, there's a book open on the table. Huh. Jung's psychology of the unconscious. Whoever owns this place must be a brain. Hello? Anyone here? Hello? Helen, Helen, don't do that. You've got no right to go nosing around. Bedroom. Nobody in it. Uh, must be the kitchen behind that door. H Helen. Hel yes. Let's just sit down and just wait for whoever owns this place to come back, huh? I just want... You've got no right, Helen. Now, the owner of this place must be the kind of person who wouldn't like people nosing around. Oh, now, I'm really. telling you, just look at it. This isn't just a cabin, it's a, it's a kind of lodge. Here, that wall lined with books. There, a, a hi-fi. Stacks of records, all classical. And those paintings on the walls. Helen, please. I want a cup of coffee, and if this door leads to the kitchen... She just won't listen. Just won't ever listen. Well, what are you standing there for? Now that you've opened the door, go on in. Oh. Good Lord. What is it? Oh. Jim. Oh, Jim. Helen, what is it? The what? kitchen. Oh. Here, Helen, here, here. You better sit down. You look like you're going to faint. Now, you just sit there. I'll have a look. Oh, no. Oh, Helen, come on now. We better get out of here. My God, oh, Jim. Blood, blood all over. And the axe. Did you see the act? Yeah, that's the first thing I saw. Come on. Blizzard. We can't... We can't go. stay here. There must have been some hell of a fight in that kitchen, and I'm not waiting for the winner to come back. Oh, you don't suppose... What? The murderer... The, the murderer they're looking for, that man who s slaughtered the Grant family, they said he was holed up somewhere on the mountain. Helen, I don't know, and we're not going to hang around to find out. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Oh. Oh. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, we, we, uh, I, I'm, uh, Jim Crane. This is my, my wife, Helen. We, uh, we got caught in the blizzard and, and we saw your cabin and, uh, and, and we just, uh, we just came in. We, we, we were over at Big Mountain for a skiing weekend and, uh, we, we started back too late, thanks to my husband. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it was my fault. You see, I don't ski. My wife does, but I don't, and, uh... Well, I, I got into this poker game, and I was winning, and I uh, couldn't quit when I was ahead. You know how it is? You don't have to make any excuses to me, friend. Maybe to her, but not to me. Well, I, I was I was just explaining. Like ice in here. Better get that fire going again. Uh, uh, you, you needn't bother on our, our account. I'm not. Well, what I meant was we were just leaving. Not in that blizzard you're not, Mrs. Crane. It, it's Miss Morgan, if you don't mind. I thought you said she's your wife. Well, she, uh, she keeps her maiden name. You kidding? No, uh, 
If you marry a doll and give her your name and she won't use it? What's the matter, Mrs. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Morgan, you said, eh? What's the matter? Your husband's name isn't good enough for you? It isn't that. Then what is it? I uh, prefer to keep my own name, that's all. A lot of women do these days. Yeah, they call it women's lib. Women's what? Lib. For liberation. You know, they keep their names, their independence, their jobs, everything. Everything, eh? <laughs> that's too bad. You were my wife, doll. You wouldn't keep your name or your job or uh, anything. And what do you do besides letting her get away with all this? Uh, engineer. I'm an engineer. You drive a train? Oh, no, 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 no. Not that kind of engineer. Hydraulic engineer. Water power. Oh. Cigarette? Oh, uh, no, thanks. I don't smoke. You? I don't smoke either. And I thought you... Huh? Nothing. You thought I was? Well, I... I noticed the pipe in the ashtray, so... Oh. Oh, well, uh... Yes, yes, I, uh... I do smoke a pipe now and then. Uh, cigarettes, too. You, uh... You haven't told us your name. Jake. Jake what? Jake's enough. We need more wood. I'll get it. Let's get out of here. No, we can't. Well, we've got to. He doesn't own this place. He doesn't live here. And from the looks of him, oh, good Lord, what a bruiser. He, he could be the murderer that Sheriff's looking for. The blood on his clothes, it's all over his park. Karen, we can't be sure it's blood. What else could it be? And, and what about the cigarettes? There's not one cigarette in that ashtray. There's nothing but pie bashes. Yeah, that's true, all right. And he's stupid. Totally uninformed. He couldn't be the man who reads these books, listens to that music. He never heard of women's lib. He thought you drove a train. Helen. Helen, we can't leave. We could die out there. We can die in here. And I have a feeling we will if we don't get... Hey. I'll hold this for a while. There's enough wood in the shed to keep us warm through the night. Though with a little lady like this to keep you warm, you wouldn't have to worry too much, would you? Well, don't look so upset, Jimmy boy, would you? I wouldn't. But then I'd see to that. Not a bad idea, come to think of it. <laughs> How about a drink, sweetie? Or uh, don't you do that either? I, I, I could use a drink, yes. You, Jim? Oh, uh, thanks, yes. Oh. Uh, what do you do, Jake? Right now, nothing. Well, I mean, when you do something. Let's see, we got uh, scotch, bourbon, vodka. What'll it be? Helen? Scotch. Huh? I said scotch. No, uh, please? Uh, excuse me, uh, please. Jimmy boy? Uh, the same. Uh, please. One thing you gotta say for men. They got better manners than women. Well, come on, come on. Pull up to the fire here. Let's all get, uh, cozy. That okay with you, Helen? It'll certainly be warmer by the fire. That isn't what I said. I know what you said. What I said? Here you are. Thank you. Showing better manners. Good. Thanks. That's <sighs> better. Easy chair, warm fire, drink. That's much better. Uh, nice, uh, nice place you've got here. Sorry. Uh, you must do a lot of reading, all those books. I read some, yes. Mm -hmm. I see you like classical music, too. Hmm. Who are your favorite? Composers, I mean. Oh, uh... Beethoven, maybe? Yes, yes, I, I like Beethoven. Oh, me too. I'm especially fond of his Tenth Symphony. Oh, yes. Yes, I... I go for that, too. Well, I don't know about you two, but I'm getting hungry. Could use some supper. How about it? Yeah, I could eat. You, sweetie? Oh, I, I suppose. Yeah, yes. Good. 
But first, we'll have to clean up the kitchen. It's a real bloody mess out there. And I mean bloody. What do you mean you mean bloody? Just said there's blood all over. All over me, too. See? Oh. Yeah, yeah. How, uh... What, what, what happened? I didn't want to kill him. I had to. I surprised him out there in the kitchen, and he came for me. It was an axe, and it was the handiest thing, and I used that. I sank it into his skull, deep. I couldn't help thinking of the Grant family. The Grant? Yes, you haven't heard about that. Whole family down in the valley, slaughtered, blood all over. I got there in the kitchen. Well, we better get to it. You mean me? A lot to clean up. I can't do it by myself. Jim will help you. No, you will. I'd, I'd rather not. I didn't ask you whether you'd rather or wouldn't. I'm telling you. I'll give you two minutes to get out in this kitchen with me and get to work. There is no Beethoven tense. Oh, Jim. What have we got ourselves into? Helen. Better humor. Go on now. You better go on out into that kitchen. I, I, I'm scared. I, I just can't be in that kitchen. Not, not alone with... With him. You saw the way he looks at me. The, the things he says. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll protect you. You. Well, how about it, dollface? Are you coming? Yes. Yes. I'm coming. Helen and Jim feel the first stirrings of terror. But worse, much worse, lies ahead for them. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Suppose now that you, not Jim and Helen Crane, but you had sought shelter from the blizzard in that forsaken mountain cabin. You had met this strange and quite obviously murderous man who calls himself Jake. Suppose you, not Helen, are helping him, against your will, to clean up the shambles in the kitchen. The bloody shambles. <sighs> well, that's it, I guess. The axe needs to be washed. There's blood all over it. Well, go on, wash it. I, I, I can't touch it. And not as liberated. Uh, wasn't that the word, as you thought? I don't see what that's got to do with it. I kind of got the impression you felt you could do anything a man could do. <laughs> all right, I'll wash the axe. You start making supper. Well, what are you standing there for? Get busy. I don't know where anything is. Lots of can stuff in that closet, and there's a can over on the wall. Think you know how to use it? I'll try. Spunky, aren't you? Spunky. You know there was a killing in this kitchen this afternoon, and I was the one who used this axe. You know that, but you got the nerve to stand up to me. Maybe too much nerve. There's beans and spaghetti, stew. And that's about it. What do you want? You decide. I figure you're good at deciding things. And that's what's wrong between you and your hubby. How do you know there's something wrong? No sweat. Five minutes with the two of you and anybody could see you're too pushy. And him, he's... He's too much the other way. Yep, like I said, you're too spunky. Somebody ought to take a little of it out of you. Get your hands off me. Oh, come on now. Now let me go. Mm. Oh, stop it. 
stop. Stop this. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, oh, Oak. What's going on? Well, you might say I was, uh, starting to do what you should do, Jimmy boy. Well, don't try that again. You do. And, and you won't do any more than you're doing right now. Oh, no? Oh, no? Oh, Jim. Jim, please. It's all right now. No harm done. I'm, 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 I'm not hurt or anything. What's the big deal, Jimmy boy? Little kiss between friends. What's to get psyched up about? Come on, chum. Let's you and me have a friendly drink while Ellen gets supper ready. No, I don't want Come to. Come on. Uh, you uh, know how to use that can opener, sweetie? I'll manage. That's my girl. Uh, scotch, right? Yeah. Oh, I see you tried to use the phone. Don't look so surprised. You put it back the wrong way around. The phone's dead. I could have told you that. The wires are down, I guess. No. I cut the wires. You, you cut... I see. Well, <laughs> you yeah, drink, Jimmy boy. Cheers. Oh, and by the way, in case you've got any other ideas about getting help, those guns over the fireplace are loaded. And neither is that revolver on your mantle. Jake. Yeah? I'll, uh... I'll make a deal with you. What gives you the idea that you're in any position to make a deal? I'm not, I'm not, but... You've got aces back to back, I know that, but I'm still in the game, Jake. You're a good poker player. You're bluffing, but I'd never be able to tell it in your face. Are you gonna listen? All ears. Let us go, Helen and me. Let us go, and we won't say a thing, not a thing, to anybody. About what? What? You know. I don't know. Look, I don't want to spell it out. You've got no choice. I hold aces back to back, like you said. All right. We, we, uh, my, my wife and I, we have a pretty good idea who you are. You, you know that, or I wouldn't be telling you. Uh-huh. So, uh, what you're thinking, once these two leave here, they'll contact the sheriff and give them a lead on me. Well, all I want to say is, just give us a break and we won't, we won't say a word to anybody. Thanks. I appreciate that. And in return, you just let us go. Who's holding you? Well, you know what I mean. We, we, we can't go now, not with that blizzard out there. I mean, tomorrow or the next day. Whenever the plow comes through and clears the road, I... I mean, I want you to let us live. What for? Answer me that, Jimmy boy. What for? Well, that's a crazy question. Yeah? Let me tell you something. Tell me. You in love with your wife? You can't answer that, huh? She in love with you. Can't answer that either, huh? Can you? How long you been married? You can answer that. Three years. What happened, Jimmy? What happened between the time three years ago you two couldn't wait to get married out bad and now when you can't wait to get divorced? You are thinking about divorce, aren't you? Well, we... Uh, we don't get along, that's for sure, but... But what? You're at each other's throats day in and day out, right? Nothing but fights, arguments, frustrations on both sides. From the minute you get up till you go to bed, right? Am I right? Yeah, you're right. And you want to live? For what? Well, you keep hoping things will change. They won't. Unless you make them change. Very few ever do. They keep hoping right into the grave, hoping. Like the Grants. Why, uh... Why did you kill the Grants? They killed themselves. They were dead long before they were put out of their misery. Like you and her. I'll make a deal with you, Jimmy. I'm listening. You give me a good reason why you should go on living. That's a deal. We want to. No. 
You just don't want to die. Now, that wasn't a bad meal, sweetie. You're real talented with a can opener. Thank you. Yeah, storm's getting worse. Yeah, we're really snowed in now. Drifts above the windowsills. Better build this fire up, and then I guess we'll hit the sack. Yeah, where do you want to sleep, sweetie? Ah, come on now, you shouldn't have any trouble making up your mind. Oh, I haven't. I'll sleep with my husband, as usual. As usual? Now, what kind of a crack is that? Now, now, cool it, Jimmy boy. Well, I won't have my wife insulted. I don't care how big you are, Jake, or how tough or cold-blooded. I won't oh, have you insulted. Oh, Jim, with... now stop it. This is no time for gallantry. You're no match for him, he'd kill you. Besides, you took me the wrong way. All I meant was... Well, come on, now, be honest. How long has it been since you two did sleep together as husband and wife? That's no business of yours. <laughs> long time, huh? Well, the minute I laid eyes on you, the way you acted toward each other, looked at each other, the way you talked, anybody could see you hated each other. We, we don't hate each other. You love each other? You see, that's what I mean. You two. You don't hate, you don't love. You don't nothing. And you ask me, that's a naughty way to live. So how about it, sweetie? How about what? There's a nice big double bed in that bedroom, and it's going to be a cold night. And me, I sure appreciate it. I warn you, Jake. Oh, Jim. I'll sleep out here on the couch. Come here, sweetie. What? Oh, let old Jake see if he can change your oh, mind. Hey, hey, now. Get what your are you hands off her. Oh, me. Oh, you dirty. Jim. Why, oh, you, you shut little treat. Hit me, would you? Oh. 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 Uh, I guess I'll hold oh. you for a while, Jimmy boy. Now, you, dog. Oh, no. You can kill me if you want to. You could torture me for hours, but I would never, never... Never. Uh, suit yourself. No, I think about it. What would I want with you? Oh, when Jimmy Boy comes to, tell him not to get any ideas in the night about escaping or overpowering me. He hasn't a chance. Jim. <sighs> Jim? Oh, I'll be okay. He still packs a mean wallop. I shouldn't have even thought of standing up to him. Some things a man will take and some things he won't. A man handling his wife is one of them. Jim, can we get out? Do you think? Would there be any way? No, no. We're slowed in. Even if we could get to the car, we wouldn't be able to drive it a foot in those drifts. What about telephoning for help? Well, the phone's dead. He cut the wires. Oh. But don't you worry. Don't you worry, Helen. There's one thing he overlooked. What? That revolver on the mantelpiece. This. It's loaded? Not yet, but it's going to be. He made a big point about those guns over the mantel and this revolver having no bullets in them. I knew that without being told those guns were the first thing I went for when you two were in the kitchen. But if they're unloaded... Well, I nosed around. I couldn't find any ammunition for the guns on the wall, but... I found these in that drawer. Do they fit? Looks as if they ought to. We'll soon find out. They do. They fit. Yeah, thank heavens. What do we do now? We'll wait till morning. But we're safe now, Helen. Safe. Thanks to you, darling... No, you haven't called me that, and I don't know when. Uh, oh, uh, I, oh, Jim, there's something I forgot to mention. I kind of figure you must have found the bullets for that revolver in the desk drawer. You did, didn't you? What of it? Uh, don't bother loading that gun. It doesn't work. The trigger's broken. 
Night. Helpless once again, Jim and Helen can only stare at each other as fear touches them with icy fingers. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. icy fingers grip Helen and Jim Crane as they face all but certain death at the hands of Jake. Curious, though, isn't it? Even strange that their fear, shared in common, brings them closer to each other than ever before in the three years of their marriage. Strange. Curious. Jim. Oh. I didn't know you were awake. I've hardly slept. I'm sorry. I, uh, I've done the best I could with this fire through the night to keep the room warm. I know. I know. I watched you get up out of that chair again and again. Thank you, Jim. What? You did it mostly for me. For my comfort. Thank you. Oh, nonsense. I, uh, I need a little warmth, too, you know. You don't get much, do you, from me? Could be I don't rate much. I think you do. Why do you withhold it? I only just found out. Found out? It wasn't the cold that kept me awake through the night. It was thinking about Jake oh. and us. Well, we'll manage a way out of this. I don't know how, but we will. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about something he said last night. He said, we don't hate each other, we don't love, we don't nothing. And then he said, you ask me, that's a nutty way to live. Well, it is, isn't it? If what he said was true about us, but it isn't. It is. Not for me. I did a lot of thinking, too. I, uh... I love you, Helen. I always have. It's just that... Y yes? I don't know. It seems I can't reach you anymore. Something happened to us along the way, and I can't figure out what it is. I think I can. Tell me. I don't know. It... I think maybe it's it's just the times we live in. I I mean, oh well. Take women's lib. I don't see anything wrong with women's lib. The fact is, I I'm all for it if if it doesn't go too far. It did with me, I think. Oh, I don't know. I I, I do. I wanted to be. I I still want to be my own person, myself, me. The last thing I wanted was to be dependent on anyone, and I guess especially on you. But last night, oh, Jim, I was scared. And when you fought for me, when you, oh, well, you just went for him like a raging animal, Jim, and you did it for me. I know you wouldn't have done it for yourself or maybe for anyone, but you did it for me. Oh, Jim, I, I, I needed you. I really did need you. Well, maybe the truth is... The simple truth is that we need each other. I, I don't mean just you and me, but everybody. I mean, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? Same world. We are dependent on each other, so... Why do we fight it? I'm not fighting it anymore. I made up my mind to that during the night. Jim. Hmm? I love you. You are a wonderful husband. O only I just never gave you the chance to be. Oh, Helen, sweetheart. Oh, I do love you. Oh, Jim, I do. Oh, I do. Oh, dearest. Well, 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 oh. look what's going on oh. here. When did you two scrappers become lovebirds? <laughs> never mind, never mind. 
The fire needs building up. Get some wood, Jim. It's shut back in the shed. Okay. So, you think you've fallen in love with your husband all over again, eh? You were listening. You overheard. I laugh myself sick. I don't see anything funny about it. You wouldn't. You believe it. So does he. Fact is, the two of you are in the same boat, and no, you better row together or else. Or else what? <laughs> You'll find out, sweetie. What will you take to let us go? Kind of putting the cart before the horse, aren't you? Go where? The blizzard has stopped. But those drifts out there must be six, eight feet high. They must plow that road. They have to keep it open. A plow is sure to come through, if not today, tomorrow. Could be. Well, then. Well, then what? Don't kill us. L let us go. Why should I? I'll give you anything you want. I'll do anything you want. How do you know what I want? What makes you so sure you can supply it? You've made that plain enough. Jake, I, I, I beg you, let us live. At least, let Jim live. And I'll do anything. Anything. Oh, oh Jim! Oh, what happened? Jim. Oh, I was bringing an armful of wood and I stepped on a log. Oh, twisted my ankle. Here, let me give you a hand. Oh. Just lean on me. Now, take it easy. Jim, oh. Jim, dear. Oh. Easy now, easy. Oh. Yeah, sit right there. Oh. Oh. Get that shoe off. Oh. Let him get it off himself. He's no cripple. I, you I... get out in the kitchen and scare up some breakfast. You heard me. Oh, the pain. See if you can stand on it. Stand? Try it. Oh, oh I, I can't. I'm helpless. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Real helpless. Hey, you make a good cup of coffee, Doe. Thank you. I'll get another cold compress for your ankle, Jim. He's all right. I said... I said he's okay. Let him worry about his ankle. You and me have some unfinished business. What is this? Helen, what is this? It, it's the only way. What only way? What are you talking about? Jim, I made a deal with him. A deal? I said I... I do anything if he'd let us go. Are you out of your mind? He's going to kill us. Now you know that. Now you're crazy. He'll get what he wants and then he'll kill us. No. Yes. No, because I'm going to kill him with this kitchen knife. All I want is, is to get close enough to him. No, no. And then no, I... no, you can't do that. It isn't in you to do that. It's got to be. There isn't any other way. What's keeping you? I, I'm coming. And leave the knife, doll. <laughs> These petitions are awful thin. You ought to know that by now. Put the knife down, I said. Stay where you are, Helen. She made a deal. And she's gone through with it. Over my dead body. No, you fool. Over your live body. Over my life. He said he'd spare you. Spare it's... me? He said us. She lied. She made the bargain to save you. Helen. Helen, you, you, you I would... I love you. I love you, Jim. I told you that. I love you. And I love you, Helen, a lot too much to let you go through with anything like this. What'd you figure you can do about it, huh? You can't even stand not on that bad ankle, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, oh. uh, Jimmy oh. boy, not you. Now, Dal. No, no. I can't. I, I can't go through with it. Oh, yes, you can. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Oh, please, I can't. I stop can't. it, Jimmy. I stop it. Oh. Jim. You. How did you? I don't know. I don't know, Helen. I, I somehow grabbed the poker and, and, and made it across the floor and hit him with it. I, I don't know how I did it. 
got to sit down and get off this. Oh, dear, ankle. dear. Oh, lean uh, on me. All right, now. Easy, easy. Yeah, thanks. Oh. Uh, better have a look at him, Helen. See if he's breathing. I, I may have killed him. He's breathing. His head bleeding. Where you hit him. I get something to tie him up with. See if there's some rope around. Oh, and snap it up. Oh. He's, he's coming to. Oh, yes. Oh. <gasps> it's the phone. He said he cut the wires. He couldn't have. It was a bluff. Hello? Sheriff? It's the sheriff and Big Indian. Who? Professor Moran. Uh, no. There, there is a man here. I, I'm afraid he's hurt. Oh. Um, oh. Me? My name's Helen Crane. My husband and I got caught in last night's blizzard, and, and we managed to get to this cabin, and we found... Well, there was blood all over the kitchen, and an axe... Helen, look out. Jake, oh. it, 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 it's all right. Oh, all right. The poker. Helen, the poker. Hit him again. No. Yes. No, you've got it all wrong. All wrong. Helen, hit him. Sure. Give me that phone. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello, hello, Ed. Yes, it, yes, it's Jake. No, it, it's okay. Every, everything's okay. No, 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 not, I'm not worried at all. I knew you'd check as soon as they, they got the service back on. Huh? Oh. Oh, man. Bobcat. Yeah, Bobcat. Surprised him in the kitchen. Killed him with a wood axe. Handiest thing. Yeah, I guess so. Prowling for food, sure. Oh, well, a nice young couple. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm very much alive. I'll explain when I see you. The plow. When? Good. No, 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 we're okay. Plenty of wood, plenty of food. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. So long. You... Professor Moran? Yes. Boy, I don't get it. We thought you were the killer they're looking for. Yes, I know. Why didn't you tell us who you were? Why, why didn't you explain about the blood in the kitchen? Well, more important, why did you act the way you did? You acted the part of the killer. Yes. Why did I act the part? Well, you were guinea pigs, I'm afraid. Guinea pigs. Yes, I'm head of the Department of Psychology at City University. I sized you two up the minute I saw you. Your marriage was headed for the rocks, and like most couples, you didn't know it. No, I... I guess we didn't. Like any other young marriage in this day and age, you'd lost contact with each other. We're going separate ways. Well, I set out to bring you back together, and... As I said before, people in the same boat have to pull together. All I did was put you both in the same boat by making you face a common danger. A danger that never existed. Well, I'm hanged. You carried things pretty far, Professor Moran. They're too far, my dear, much too far. <sighs> You'll find aspirin in the medicine cabinet. Bring me a couple, would you? Hmm. On second thought, you bring the bottle. And so terror turns to surprise and relief. Pretty shrewd fellow, Professor Moran, wouldn't you say? I mean, realizing that Jim and Helen were headed for divorce, that took keen insight into human nature. But then, he was, after all, a trained psychologist. I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Marriage is two people in the same boat. A cliché, of course. But the very core of every cliché is truth. All is not gold that glitters. A stitch in time saves nine. And so on. I couldn't help thinking 
that all humanity is in the same boat. And what an infinitely better and happier world it would be if we all learn to pull together. Our cast included Lois Smith, Larry Haynes, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I don't want your wife on board. This voyage has begun. The course is set and it will not be changed. May I remind you, Captain, that this is my ship. Now, this is my ship, Mr. Ames. My ship. From port to port. Your ship in the harbor. Mine on the sea. My ship. Here I give the orders. Here I expect to be obeyed. In the name of all that's reasonable, man, in view of our business, can't you see this is no place for a woman? There's only one place for Annabella. My wife remains at my side. But on a slave ship... By my side, do you hear? By my side. Now, we'll hear no more of this. Or by the living God, owner or not, I'll clap you in irons. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.